Does chalk even exist anymore? I mean, is there even a practical use for chalk? I haven't seen chalk in years. I mean, if you find some, let me know, because I'm trying to write the best theme song in television history back into existence. Chalk Zone is the best show that Nickelodeon has ever screwed over. Let me explain that with a bit of context. From the moment Chalk Zone's original pilot aired, Nickelodeon treated it like their high school girlfriend right before they're set to leave for college. Out of state. This is Oh Yeah Cartoons. It's the animation block where Bill Burnett and Larry Huber's newest idea would air in 1998. It was a show about an 8 year old kid who finds magic chalk that allows him to enter a chalk world that he controls. Under the nose of his teacher, who for some reason despises cartoons, he enters this chalk world where he encounters superheroes, supervillains, and his soon to be best friend Snap. Nick loves it and decides to order a full series. Oh, is that what this is? A cartoon? No, Rudy baby, this is Chalk Zone. The pilot would soon be created, aging Rudy up two years to ten years old, and it would be awesome. There were a lot of animated shows during the 90s and 2000s doing interesting things with their premise, but very few, especially on Nick, were doing interesting things with their animation. Chalk Zone looks and plays out like the fever dream of every 12 year old that's ever played an overly intense game of Foursquare. Rudy's regular world, where he deals with a bully named Reggie, which is the absolute most obvious bully name since Butch, is animated in traditional 2D hand-drawn style. Where things get interesting is in the chalk world, where literally everything is animated to be chalk and everything is drawn in the style of chalk. It gives the series maybe the most unique aesthetic of literally any animated show of that particular era. It also allows a show to do things like this. And things like this. There's the school gym. Way to go, Penny. Rudy, you made it! But boy, did Nickelodeon mishandle nearly everything about this show. Its pilot aired on December 31st, 1999, with the rest of the first season set to air just a few months later. And then, apparently Nick decided to take away Rudy's chalk for literally years. Let's lock him up and throw away the key! Season 1 of Chalk Zone is amazing. Rudy rescues Snap from a literal bubblegum spider, Snap gets a car that he talks to like Knight Rider, and his chalk villain Scrawl makes his appearance. But apparently this wasn't enough to excite Nickelodeon. Nick would hold the first season hostage for literally two years. That's right, two years would go by after the pilot aired before Nick would finally release the first season of Chalk Zone in 2002. By the time it had aired, the second season was already done being made. To this very day, the reason why Nick did this has never been made public. In fact, there aren't even any guesses other than maybe the more fearful social climate of the early 2000s. Which is really strange, because not only was Chalk Zone awesome, but people loved it. Its premiere was, at the time, the highest rated premiere in the network's history, which Brain Blast over here would top shortly after, but season 1 would come and go. And then things got stranger with season two. Thanks a lot, kid. You've given me a wonderful life. See, what also made Chalk Song great was that it knew it was weird, and so did its actors. E.G. Daly here, who was an excellent singer, would voice Rudy, and she'd lead the charge on these things. How do I look to you? These were minute-long music videos that came at the end of nearly every Chalk Zone episode. And they are, well, let's just say you don't need Donald Glover and Beyonce to sing Can You Feel the Love Tonight when you've got these tiny chalk mother- These were incredible. They were weird and they were memorable. The talent knew it too. E.G. Daly and the cast loved this show, but season two was more of the same for Nick. It would take another year for Nick to get around to airing season two of Chalk Zone. Once again, no one had any idea why, but it was clear Nick didn't like Chalk Zone as much as the fans. They quickly moved the show to the 9.30pm time slot, the last slot before the Nick at Night block started and probably well after kids would have fallen asleep. Why? Because apparently a kid that hangs out with this guy and draws furniture out of chalk meshes really well with the musical stylings of Jesse Katsopoulos. Don't help. Season 3 would air in the same time slot as Season 2, and by Season 4, things would get even stranger, but mostly just sad. Part of what made Chalk Zone so special was that its animation style was a reflection of the show's overall attitude. 
Very few shows so perfectly represented the imagination and creativity of the kids watching. Very few shows represented the overflowing eccentricity of its audience the way the Chalk Zone did. Chalk Zone was all about one kid being able to draw and create the world as he imagined it. It was about one very normal kid being able to escape his troubles, his bully, his reality through art, through expressing himself in the most absurd and childlike ways imaginable. He also made crap like this. So what is this? Why does this exist? But the show's art and animation style wasn't just a gimmick, it was essential to the show's message and quality. So when season 4 rolled around and Nick outsourced most of the season to studios overseas, it not only destroyed the quality of the show, but also removed nearly everything that made it special. For some reason, Nick gave up on the show entirely and quickly from the moment it premiered all the way up until its final season. At this point, during season 4, Nick announced that the show would be cancelled after that season had finished airing. They eventually shoved season 4 into the 6am time slot. That's right, the 6am time slot. You know, the time of day where only retired people eating their special K and that annoying frat guy who thinks working out before the sun comes up makes him a hero are awake. Not their target audience. That time slot is known as a dead slot. Only five of that season's episodes would make it to air before Nickelodeon would stop airing the show altogether in 2005. They would finish airing the last six episodes of season four three years later in 2008 in dead slots again. Three years later. Bringing Chalk Zone back from the dead in one of the strangest moves imaginable. But what's maybe most interesting is how the show would have ended if it had survived. The show's creators wanted to wrap up the show with a genuine arc. Snap would have had to come to terms with Rudy getting older and would have realized that at some point, Rudy was going to stop coming into the Chalk Zone to see him, and Rudy and Penny would have gone to college where Rudy would study fine arts, and the two would have started dating. But the creators, Rudy, Snap, and Penny, never got that chance. It's hard to believe the Chalk Zone even existed. It was weird in all the best ways, from its characters to the way it looked and to the way it was essentially cast aside. But there's something kind of timeless about Chalk Zone. Going back and watching it today, it's still just as unique and just as great as it was back when it aired. But as the creativity at the network that erased its drawings forever slowly dies, it's worth remembering that Chalk Zone stood for and was everything that once made Nick and being a kid so special. There is not a kid on the planet that didn't want to find Rudy's Chalk. There is not a kid on the planet that watched Chalk Zone and didn't want to draw a world of their own. Chalk Zone was a true escape, and more importantly, it was a genuine representation of what it means to be a kid, to live in your own world. I wasn't kidding. I haven't seen a piece of chalk in literally years. I'm not even sure they still exist. I'm sure they do. But if Rudy did take all that chalk with him on his way to that 6am time slot of death, maybe, just maybe, today's generation of animators and animation houses could use a bit of that chalk. But for the love of God, do not give it back to Rudy. Because I have now heard this theme song a million times in one week, and whoever wrote it needs a new career. I know. Well, guys, that is it for today's episode of Nerdstalgic. I'm just a normal guy making normal video essays for normal people about things that people may or may not even remember. But if you enjoyed this episode, hit that like button. If you are not yet subscribed, press subscribe. I put out more episodes uh, a, a, a week, once a week, sometimes twice a week. It, it just depends. So hit subscribe so you don't miss any of those. Also, hit the bell because when you hit the bell, you actually get notified when, when I upload something. Otherwise, you might not ever know if you don't hit the bell. So there's, yeah, hit the bell helps as well. Also, I want to know what you guys think about Chalk Zone. Did you like this show? Did you watch this show? Was it something that was interesting to you back then? Is it something that maybe you'd want to see get revived today? Seems Nick wants to revive all of their older shows. Let me know down in the comments. And uh, yeah, to your left and right, there's uh, two not chalk related episodes of Nerdstalgic that you can click on and, and watch. And yeah, now I'm going to go uh, try to scrub this theme song out of my head forever. Until next time, guys. <laughs>